Hi, it's a little bit different today. We've got a camera and we're going to do a code review. So this is a snippet someone sent me. Uh, they have some kind of bug in it. I can't remember. It was a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and I said I was going to review the code and I asked them if I could make a video reviewing it. I don't know why the font's all weird, but... Um, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? Let's see if we can change that. Now that's all screwed up, so uh, we'll just have to live with the weird font. Hopefully that's not too distracting. I'll figure that out next time. I'm on a new computer, so I need to uh, figure out what's going on. So there's a little error here, and I remember this was just something to do with um, adding a module state. So we'll just get rid of that, and then we're starting afresh. So this is a, a review of the code. Um, I'm not going to do a really detailed review because there's a lot of code, and that would take uh, an hour or more. Uh, so we're just going to have a sort of quick skim over it. I've already looked through it once. Uh, like I say, it was about a week or two ago. Um, but I remember it was basically the same things coming up again and again. I'm not interested in the user interface, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm not interested in the module tree, but it can stay there because it frames the shot nicely. Um, we're not looking at the functionality. We don't care if it works. Uh, all we're, we care about is the code quality. So some of this is going to be my opinion. A lot of it is opinion. Some of it is going to be objective um, and factual, if you like. It's going to be things that are definite, but most of it's going to be uh, subjective and it's going to be my opinion. So let's just start. So he's, he's got some um, files included here. So this is in the on init of the interface script. He's got some files included there and then a load of code. So first of all, I would say don't include a load of code. Put that in another file and include it. So so your init should just be includes. Um, most of this is commented out, but I'll just see if there's anything obvious we should have a look at. Um, so, right, okay, so here I can see something straight away. So you're building an array of uh, strings and you've got fx slot one, fx slot two, fx slot three. Uh, there's no need to write this out. You could just have a loop that populates this array um, so that's what I would do there. And in fact, you have a loop here, so you could just incorporate it into this loop because that looks like it's, yeah, it's going through there. So you, you could do that all in, in one loop. Um, this loop is just kind of floating out here. It's not in a function or anything, so I don't know what it does. But you have a, a comment here that says create the, sorry, the font screwed up here. Create the effect slot configurations array dynamically. So instead of having a comment here, why don't you make a function and call it create effect slot configurations? And then you don't need the comment and you've got a function and this is all wrapped up neatly then. So that's what I'd suggest for that. Um, oh yeah, one thing I remember now when I was going through this code, there's um, it, it smells like chat GPT. And I asked the guy and he said, yeah, there's some chat GPT stuff in there. And chat GPT is fine. Uh, I often... I think I come across as criticizing it a lot when I see people posting it on the forum, but it's just a tool and the tool itself is fine, but it's how you use the tool that can be a problem. Um, so if you know what you want out of it, then you can check if what it's given you is what you wanted. But if you don't know, then you're just trusting the tool to do the job. And you can't do that with ChatGPT. Um, it doesn't know High's script. So when you ask it to give you some code, it's going to be a mishmash of JavaScript and things that are a bit like high script. So this is an example here. Um, it says function, that should be an inline function. You almost never need to write just function. There, there are some cases, but usually in this context, it would always be inline function. So again, another loop floating here and some other stuff. Um, this should all be encapsulated um, in some kind of function to keep it neat and tidy. Uh, chat GPT strikes again. We can see it's added these vars here because that is a JavaScript for loop. 
in highs. You don't need that. Um, a little word on the uh, braces here. So this is where we're getting into my opinion. Um, it's slightly objective as well. So we've got the brace, the opening brace on the same line as the um, the, the loop. But in highs, I always put it on the next line. Now, if I'm writing JavaScript, I do actually tend to uh, favor that layout, same in PHP. But in highs, I do it this way. And the reason I do it is because that's the highs default. If we take one of these components, right click on it, select Create Custom Callback Definition. And um, was that jumped us? Did I click on something there? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, create Custom Callback Definition. And then we paste that in. You can see the highs default is to put the braces on the next line. So that's what I do, and wherever possible I do that. And the reason is it, it leads to consistency in your code. It doesn't matter if you're writing the code or if you're using highs' built-in things, it will have that same layout. So I always go to the highs default if possible. That's why when I'm writing control callbacks, I always write them in this format, on something, 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 control. So again, it's just to make code more consistent and uh, ultimately more readable and easier to maintain. So um, this is something you shouldn't do. You're dynamically getting a reference to a component and you're storing it in a var. You have to use a var or a reg in the on init callback. Another reason this should be in a function. But in this particular case, you shouldn't get references dynamically like this. Um, and just, just if they're just going to be used in one place like this, what you should do is get the reference in a const. And then you can use it whenever you need it. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated because it's part of an array. Um, so this should be an array and you should be getting multiple components and putting them in the array. But the sort of rule still applies. You shouldn't just be calling, uh, uh, grabbing references dynamically. Um, yeah, there's, there's stuff in here that could be condensed. We can reduce the amount of code. I'm trying to be quick, so I'm just sort of skimming through it. Um, yeah, that's fine. So uh, with set visible, there's another alternative you can use. Um, so you could do FX panel master dot show control and then put the value in there. Um, either of these is fine, set visible or show control. The, my only thing there is be consistent. If you're going to use show control, use it throughout. If you're going to use the set visible thing, use that throughout. Um, okay, more commented stuff, so that's all commented out. Okay, let's have a look in some of these um, scripts. So this first one, effect declarations, if I remember correctly, it is just some declarations. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, all oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this function here, this can be greatly reduced. Again, this should be an inline function. This should be a local variable. You should never use var unless you absolutely have to. And there are some certain situations where you have to, but 99% of the time you can avoid it and use local instead. Um, so what you can do, you've got this massive if statement here and then map name equals display name. And what you're actually doing in this function is um, you've called it you've called it process effect mapping, but that's not what you're doing. You're formatting the display name into what you want the um, mapped name to be. Um, so that would be an inline function. This would be uh, a local variable. Now I actually I remember when I looked at this originally, I've, I've already rewritten this function. Um, because you can actually get this down to one line of code uh, with some slight tweaks. So for example, your incoming display name is called reverse delay and the outgoing mapped name is reverse delay. The only thing you've done is taken out the space. Same with this one, same with this one. And I think that's the same for pretty much all of them. So that one you've removed the hyphen, okay? Um, map name equals display name. Yeah, so you don't need to do this because you're doing the same thing. You're just removing spaces and hyphens. So we can comment all of this out. Um, yeah, we don't even need a variable declaration. So you could just do return um, display name dot replace sp 
spaces. So that will remove the spaces and do, and you can chain these. So you do then dot replace um, hyphens. And I think that should be it. So uh, effect declaration 236. And that's nothing to do with us. We haven't changed 236. Well, let's have a little look at it while we're here. Um, 236. Let's just comment that out and hope it compiles. Nah, it's going to lead us to more errors. But anyway, that's how you do it. I think that's right. I haven't tested it, obviously, as you've seen. But you can get it down to one line. And change the name of this, because that isn't what this function does. It doesn't process anything. It formats uh, the display name. So good naming is what you want. There's a book, actually, that I've just uh, read. It's called Naming Things. And it's a book for programmers about how to name things, because it's something we all struggle with, is coming up with good names. But in this case, just say what the function does. Um, you've put a comment here. I'm not sure the comment's necessary, but um, this formats the display name. That's all it does. Um, you, you could even um, say uh, it replaces... No, I haven't put anything longer than that. I think formats display name is fine. Um, so there's that. Let's have a look. Um, cons file slots. Yes, that's fine. So yeah, you're just uh, setting up some stuff in here, I can see. Yeah, again, chat GPT, um, content.addLabel. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's fine. Like I say, this would take me hours if I was to sort of go through everything in minute detail. So I'm just trying to be quick here. Uh, effects, what's this one? Um, oh, actually, let's just go. No, we can't go back to it because there's an error in it. Um, let's have a look. Uh, effects handling, line 86. I can't be bothered going through and fixing the errors. So we'll just stick with this. So I think in this one, you're just setting up loads of um, properties. There's almost a, there's almost certainly a shorter way of writing this, but um, yeah, the only thing I'd say here is the formatting. Um, so you've got your opening brace and then another opening brace for the object within the array. So then the next thing I would put on a new line rather than having it on the same line. And that makes it clear that this thing belongs within that thing. And then you've actually got another level of object. So that should be on a new line and that should be on a new line and that should be indented and these should be indented. So it just makes it clear that this stuff is within this stuff is within this is within this. So, so yeah, it's a little hard to see that hierarchy when you've got um, things on the same levels. So use indentation in this way. Um, something else you can do, I believe these IDs, ID 0, ID 1, ID 4, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think they're just um, incremental, so it's going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's possible you don't need the ID because you can just use the array index. I don't know what other stuff you're doing, so that might not be the case, but um, it's possible that, that's, uh, what you, that, that you can do that. And if you can do that, then you also don't need this internal config object. You can just use this object for all the properties. But that's just a, a matter of taste. Uh, something I've noticed in here, and I think in the other file as well, you're not using namespaces. It looks like in here, actually, you're encapsulating everything in an object called knob settings. Uh, this should be a namespace called knob settings. Um, uh, yep. So that's all I'd say on that one. Use namespaces for all your included files. Uh, oh, this is the one we were looking at previously. OK. So yeah, this doesn't have a namespace. So you've called this uh, effect declaration. So what you should do is have a namespace called effect. Oop, can't type. Declarations. And then you put all your code between these two braces. Um, a little thing on naming here. For namespaces, capitalize the uh, first letter of each word, just like the hides class names, like audio file, audio sample processor, that kind of thing. So again, we're just going with the highs default, and these are essentially our classes within highs. They're not really classes, but we're kind of working with these namespaces like the classes. So um, yeah, capitalize the names there. Okay, and then this one, effect handling, again, 
uh, namespace it. These, um, nah, they shouldn't be fast. They'd probably be regs. Um, current effects slot, yeah. Yeah, there should probably be reg variables. If they're not going to change, there should be consts, but I'm guessing they are going to change, otherwise you won't be assigning them like this. Um, dump button callback. You don't need to have that comment there. We know what it is. It says on dump button control. The on tells us it's a callback. The dump tells us, um, the dump button tells us what control it is and control tells us it's a control callback. So that is um, an unnecessary comment. Uh, clear the effect slot. Well, it says effect slot dot clear. So again, we don't need that comment. Don't clutter the code uh, with comments that aren't needed. It's very rare you need a comment. Usually you're better off taking your code and putting it into a function and giving the function a meaningful name instead of writing a comment. Um, that has the advantage of it provides the documentation that a comment would provide, but it also makes your code more modular. Um, something you can do here is called early return. So generally I like to avoid nesting. Um, so instead of having this if value do all this stuff, what we can say is if not value, so we're inverting it using the um, exclamation mark there, return. And then if it doesn't return, it'll do all this stuff. So that um, if statement now acts as a kind of gatekeeper to the rest of the function. Just pull that back there. So I try and avoid nesting if possible, just because it leads to cleaner code. And um, yeah, if, if you've got less nesting, it's, it's a bit easier to follow. Uh, so uh, what's this component dot get ID dot replace? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Um, panel index, there's probably an easier way to get this rather than just pulling um, pulling the ID of the button and then doing the string manipulation you're doing to get the number. You can probably, if you've got these in an array, you can just grab the index. Uh, setting the text, visible, yep. No IDs. Right, so you're getting the component. Oh, this is, this is quite bad actually. So every time this button is clicked, you're coming in here and grabbing a load of button, um, knob component references um, every single time this button is clicked. That's, that's really not good. You should be getting these beforehand in on init and uh, storing them in an array and then you can just access them when you need them instead of getting them every single time. Um, now here, look, you're using show control, but here you're using visible. Uh, use one or the other, don't use both. Hide each knob related to this panel. Again, we don't need that comment. We can see it's setting the show control to false. So we can get rid of that. For uh, J, why J, why not I? Yeah, that should be I. There's no reason for that to be J. You use J when you're in the next, uh, when you've got nested loops. Uh, button control, unless there is some loop here then I'm not seeing, no, so yeah. Um, that should be an inline function. So as I said at the beginning, there's a lot of stuff in here that's the same thing coming up again and again. Uh, that should be a fixed reference in a const somewhere. Okay, um, this if statement, you've done your bracketing a bit weird. I mean, I've seen this style of bracketing, but in highs, do it like this just to be consistent with highs as default. But actually when there's only one line in each clause, you can just get rid of it. You don't need the lines. Um, oh, and this is a case actually where you can use the ternary operator. So you can say um, effect name, I guess that would be equals one. I'm not sure if this is exactly what you want to do, but you can do a question mark, effect name, else select effect. Uh, so yeah, that just reduces that to one line. Uh, some people don't like the ternary operator. I know when I first started um, programming years ago, the ternary operator confused me. I don't really understand it. But if you can get used to it, it makes your code a lot more concise. And um, yeah, I like it. Um, another floating 
loop here. This should be housed in a function somewhere, probably. Um, right, so this is another thing where you could do, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's open that back up, where you could do the early return. So if not clicked, in this case, because it's in a loop. Oh no, actually we're in a, we're in a function within a loop. Okay, so we're gonna call that function. Uh, you do return there. And then get rid of that. So again, we're just turning this if statement in, if statement into a gatekeeper. Um, so if it doesn't get past this, then it, the rest of the code won't run anyway. So that um, just makes it a bit well. I I think it makes it easier to um, maintain the code and follow the flow because you you have these sort of stoppers, and you might have another one if you have other conditions. And it has to get past all the conditions before it gets to whatever the main functionality is. Uh, not by IDs, but panel. So again, inline function there. Chat GPT has written that. These should be locals. Uh, this is pretty much the exact same thing we saw in one of the other files. So um, you get in the reference and stuff like that. So that can be changed. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of the same kind of thing coming up. It's, um, a lot of repeated stuff. Let's see, function to handle item selection. Item selected, display name, yeah, it's probably fine. So you've got some nested if statements here. See if you can unnest those, but sign, oh. Right, okay, this is, right, you're using in here in a, an if statement. That doesn't work, that needs to be, in is only used in a for in loop. And I think that's the only time it's used. So if what you, I'm not 100% sure what you're trying to do, but if you're trying to check if um, current effect slot contains set effect, then you need to use the contains function. So that would be, uh, this one here. So that's how you check if one string contains another string. I'm not sure if that's what you're doing here, but whatever it is, in isn't going to get you there. Yeah, it's more of the same kind of stuff here. Um, so you've got an if statement with a for loop with an if statement. Uh, so again, just see if you can reduce some of the nesting. And you've got to replace all these with inline functions and all these vars need to be local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the same kind of thing. It's just some. It's it's basically code cleanup and code formatting, and uh, correcting Chat GPT's uh, mistakes, or um, well, not mistakes so much as its lack of understanding. Remember, Chat GPT, even though it's AI, it's called AI, it doesn't have any real intelligence. It's just looking at the data it's trained on and guessing what word comes next. So. You've got to provide the intelligence for it and uh, correct its mistakes, which it will make all the time because it doesn't know what it's doing. Um, yeah, so I think we're done there. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh. Uh, if you've seen this and you have a, a script or a snippet, you'd like me to have a look through and see if I can give you any pointers such as the ones I've given here then um, send it across to me, send me a message, and I'm happy to take a look at it. I can't promise that I will, um, I can't promise that I won't be critical of it, but I try to be polite at least. Um, and I will always preface it all by saying, it's mostly my opinion, so ignore it all if you want. Um, but I, I hope through this I can help you uh, write cleaner, more maintainable code and improve your projects in general. And uh, in the on the, in the grand scheme of things, put more clean, maintainable code into the uh, collective knowledge base that we have. Okay, I think that's it for this video. Let me know what you think about having the camera going as well. Maybe we could use this setup for live streams. Um, and uh, hopefully it's all come out okay. Like I say, it's a new setup, new laptop, so we'll see if it works. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.
Bye for now.